Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss processing controls. Processing controls are part of the application controls. Here we are talking about accounting information system application control or generally speaking information system or software application control. Now before you process any transaction in an accounting information system, you have to input the data. You have to feed the data into the system. Then the system will process the data. Now in the prior session, we looked at input controls. So how do we avoid bad data from getting into the system in the first place? In this session, we're going to be discussing processing controls. Now both input controls and processing controls are part of the application control. Then eventually, next, we're going to discuss something called output. After the data is processed, it's going to spit out some output. It could be a report, a statement, some sort of a record. Well, we're going to also have output controls, but that will be the next session. So why do we need to learn about processing controls? Because of the input controls that we spoke about in the prior session. And remember, we, sp we spoke about the batch input control and the real time or just simply the input control. So we could have two type of input depending on whether the system is a, is a real time, which is online system, or we're using batch processing. So it doesn't matter. If the input control failed or did not detect the error or the errors, we hope that the processing controls in here, we can catch this error from going to output. We can stop the process. So the purpose of the processing control is to prevent and detect the errors while the transaction are being processed. So as this process going on, it's going to hold, it's going to stop, and it's going to give us what we call an exception report or an error report telling us something is wrong. Usually processing controls are embedded, are programmed into the software during the development stage. So when the software is being developed, we embed, we have those controls programmed inside the system. So you cannot really change them. You can change them, but sometimes it may cost a lot of money. So it provides the essential control when you program it, when you build that program to minimize processing errors by preventing, detecting and correcting the errors. Now, bear in mind, some of these controls we're going to be discussing next. So we're going to be looking at processing control. They overlap, they overlap or similar to input controls. Because sometimes what happens is you may not have the, the control at the input level. You might have the control inside the processing because when you develop the software, you know, we did not have this technology. Now you could have this control at the input level. So that could happen. So you will see that some of them they might overlap. You might see the same or similar naming and we'll see those. So next we're going to look at our actual processing controls, examples of them. So what are, what are some examples? One is validation test. And we looked at the, we looked at some sort of a validation test in the input control. Simply put, is the transaction appropriate to process? So the system, once they start the process, the transaction, if somehow they find something wrong, they would reject it. For example, when we purchase inventory, if the inventory code item does not match an existing inventory code, if that's not the inventory that we are supposed, we're supposed to have, then we, we, can, we cannot process the purchase order. Why? Because it does not match an existing inventory level. This is called the validation test. Again, this could be done at the input level, but let's assume somebody override the system or our input level does not validate, does not have this validation feature. Hopefully the processing controls the soft embedded in the software where this does not pass. We could have something called sequence check or sequence se sequence check or sequence test. Well, what does that mean? It means transactions or items are in a correct and complete sequence. This also could be could be done at the input level. And here we can talk about the completeness. Also, for example, we could also have a completeness test inside the processing. Usually, usually it's it's done at the input level, but also it could be done in, at the processing level. So this could be another similar test. Notice some of them, they overlap. For example, if you're dealing with sequence, for example, if you're processing checks, well, if you see a check is missing, it's going to raise a red flag, give you a report that check is missing. Sales order, sales order, each one should have a predetermined number. You're looking for any duplicate sales order. You're looking for anyone that's missing. You want to know why it's missing. It could be voided. That's fine. But we need to know the system, the processing control should tell us, look, this sales order, we went from 1050 to 1052. Where is sales order 1051? Okay. Same thing for the 
purchase order. The processing should also have what's called arithmetic test or cross-footing. Simply put, check in the map. And any simple software should do that as long as it's programmed properly. For example, it should take the gross wages minus the withholding, should give you the net pay, or the gross sales minus the sales tax that we need to pay to the government should give us the net, the sales net of tax, which is taking the tax out. So we know what our sales net of tax is. We could also have inside the processing control something called data reasonableness, reasonableness test, which is similar to the limit. For example, the amount that we produce should not exceed or falls below a predetermined amount. A, a good example will be, for example, if we don't pay more than $2,000 per period, per pay period, whatever that period is, weekly or bi-weekly or bi-monthly. So the system should not be able to generate a paycheck that's in excess of 2000 This could be a data reasonable, reasonableness check or could be a limit test. So if we did not have that limit test at the input level, it could be embedded in the processing level. So when we try to process the transaction, it will stop. Also, we could have matching control and I would say the matching control is pretty unique to the processing control because you will not be able to process the transaction until all documents or whatever, all the conditions of the transaction are in the system or met. An example of that will be three-way matching, which is basically we don't cut a check unless there's a purchase order, a receiving report, and a vendor invoice. And what happened is, since we are dealing with an accounting information system, each one of those will have some type of a unique number or unique key that connect them. So as long as all of those exist and they went through the their, inter, their specific internal control, whether it's in the purchasing department, receiving department, or obviously the vendor invoice is easy, it's sent by the vendor. As long as we don't have those three items available, we cannot cut the check. So this is a matching control as part of the processing control. We could also have something called a transaction log uh, control. This could be considered processing, could be considered output. I'm going to discuss it a little bit more in the output control, what we're going to be discussing next. But I just want, just want to let you know that the system keeps track of who, when, what, and how. It tells you who processed the transaction, what time, how did they do it, which accounts were involved, so on and so forth. So this is what's called a transaction log. Again, I will discuss this a little bit more in the output. Again, this could be considered a processing and this could be considered output because really the transaction log, although it's it's showing you what happened during processing, but you look at it after the fact. So whether it's when I consider it processing or output, it doesn't matter. You need to know exactly what it is. What should you do now? Whether you are a CPA candidate or an accounting information student, go to Farhat Lectures, work additional uh MCQs, look at additional resources that's going to help you understand this topic, prepare you for your CPA exam, help you in your class. Invest in your accounting career. It's worth it. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.